Let me ask you a question. Which of these three pages looks the most appealing? When you first write your content, when you first create your document, all your text will look like this on page one. What I've done on pages two and three is to break that text into two columns or three columns. And I've also aligned it so it's got straight edges down both sides. So let me introduce to you how to create this column effect that you see here. Here's our starting point. We have a title or a heading at the top and just a page of body text here. Firstly, I'm gonna take this body text and convert it into either two or three columns. So first, you need to select all the text that you wanna to convert to columns. Then on the layout tab at the top of the screen, come to the columns option in the page setup group. This gives you the choice to convert to either two or three equally sized columns, or to have what's called a left or a right column format. Now the left column format gives you a thinner left column and a wider right column. So you can have say a sidebar with some quick links to the main content. And then the main sidebar on the right hand side has the actual content. And right is just the reverse of that. So let's choose two columns initially. You can see it's converted your one column format into two. When you've got stuff in columns like this, back on the home tab, if you justify the text, it presents a lot better on the page. So these are two equally sized columns. If I went back to layout and I chose columns and then three, it gives me three equally sized columns. Because of the extra gaps in between the text, the last little bit of text has actually been forced onto the next page. So let's go back to two columns and then let's look at some of the options that you have available. So still under the columns, at the bottom is an option called more columns. And this displays a separate dialog where all of your controls are in one place. So firstly in the middle, you have number of columns two. It could also be three or four or more. It all depends on the layout of your page. If you had a landscape page, for example, you'd have room for more columns. The line between here gives you the newspaper line effect. So if I just click OK there, it's put a single straight line straight between the two columns there to separate them. Back in the columns feature and more columns, at the moment, these columns are equal widths. And that's because of this tick box down the bottom where it's ticked and it says equal column width. If we untick it, the width boxes then become available to adapt. When they're equal width, only the first one is available to adapt. So let's untick it. If I nudge either of these figures up or down, let's say I take column one and reduce the width down, you can see that column two is increasing to fill up that gap. If I decrease column two, the spacing here increases to take over that gap. In other words, the whole page width is accommodated for, and you can determine what size each column width is and how much space between the two that you want. Let's set this to a six centimeter width on the first column. That gives us an eight centimeter width at the moment on the second column. I'm gonna reduce that down a bit in terms of spacing to give us just a one centimeter gap between the two. And that actually leaves me with 8.92, or just under nine centimeters for that right-hand column. Then I choose OK, and you can see it's actually offset the columns now. They are unequal widths. You may or may not have noticed that the heading at the top still goes the full width of the page. It hasn't been affected by the fact that we converted this body text here into two columns. And that's because there's a silent or a hidden section break there. Let's zoom up a little bit. And on the home tab, let's turn on the hidden formatting. Now this little double line here, I'm actually just gonna click right before that and press enter. And you can see it now says section break continuous. If I click in the heading and look down on the status bar, we can see the heading is in section one. But if I click in the body text and look down at the status bar, I can see that's section two. So these two, even though they're on the same page, are two completely independent, two different sections. And as such, each section can have its own settings. So that's why the header at the top is still using a one column format. But the body text below that section break is using a two column format. And I could, if I wanted to, take say a section down here, just that little section there, and then going back to the layout tab under columns, change that to a three column format. So now if I reduce this down, we've got one bit at the top, which is a one column format, the bit in the middle, which is a two column format, and notice how it's redistributed the text between those two columns. And then finally down the bottom, we have a three column format, all on the same page. 
When you pre-select text and then switch to a different column format, it automatically inserts the section break continuouses for you. You could also manually do it by positioning the cursor and on the layout tab in the breaks option, under the section breaks subcategory, you could choose continuous. That's a way to manually insert a continuous section break. But certainly in the case of columns, you don't need to go here because it creates those for you in a much easier way. Let's just finish this video by talking about the column break. To demonstrate this, I'm going to convert everything here back to a two column format. So all that text is now in one section again. And down towards the bottom, you can see that this paragraph here starts the paragraph just here and continues at the top of the next column because obviously there's not enough room in the one column to display the entire paragraph. If you want to keep those two bits together, I'm going to first of all position my cursor in front of that paragraph and then go into the breaks option on the layout tab. I'm going to insert a column break. Now down here you can see the dotted line that says column break and it, what it's done is it's moved that whole paragraph up to the top of the next column. In the case of a newsletter, you might decide to put that paragraph starting up on column two and then using the space that's now been made available, you can insert a little image there or some other piece of content that fits that size gap. And it's good practice to break up text with other types of content, to keep it varied, to keep your reader's attention and to move away from that wall of text that we've all seen before. Just to recap, to convert from a single column format to either a two or a three or an offset format, select the text, go to the layout tab and go to the columns feature and either choose one of the presets or click more columns to display the dialog box, choose your settings and click OK. Secondly, to control content in terms of which column it starts in, you can position your cursor and then again on the layout tab under breaks, you can insert a column break at that position. And that means that whatever follows starts in the next available column. And that's how columns, column breaks and continuous section breaks all work together towards that ultimate goal of making whatever you're presenting much more readable and much more interesting.